Hello, welcome. My name is Tom Copeland. I'm an author and advocate for the business of family child care. In this video, we're going to talk about how much you should save for your retirement. Most family child care providers struggle financially. It's difficult to get rich caring for children, as you know. Some providers do well, but many struggle. Most providers, I think, are also uneasy about their financial situation and feel unprepared for their retirement. Many family child care providers, like most people, are not saving enough for retirement. Well, if people know that they're not saving enough for their retirement, why aren't they? Reasons are such as, I don't have any money to save. I don't know how to save. I'm trying to save for college. I want to buy a fence. I want to make a house repair, something else. I'm spending money on something else. As a result, most providers make retirement savings an extremely low priority. And as such, the, the savings don't accumulate. So we need to think about making saving for retirement a top priority. And the way to do that is to focus on spending, is to focus on reducing your spending. No matter what your financial situation, and I assume you're not rich, it's likely that you can still reduce your spending to some degree. So I would start by setting a modest monthly savings goal 50 bucks a month, I don't know, 100 bucks a month, something that you feel like you could do, and you put that aside in the, on the first of each month. You make it a top priority. And if the month goes along and you start running out of money, you need to cut something. You need to cut, I don't know, eating out, clothing, something else, because retirement savings has got to be number one. It's also called paying yourself first, all right? Uh, doing something for yourself financially first before you spend money on other things. If you learn to live on a little bit less while you're working, it's gonna be a lot easier to manage your money and have a, uh, a nice retirement. Now, small amounts of money add up, so don't be afraid to start. You know, oh, Tom, I don't have any money. Or I don't have enough and it'll, it won't make a difference. Well, if you save $5 a day for five days a week, that's $1,250 a year without interest. If you earn 8% interest, I'm not saying you will, but if you did by investing it, you'll have about $19,000 in 10 years. So it can add up. It's never too late to start saving for your retirement. If you save $10 a day and you're age 52 and your money earns 8% a year, you'll have $294,000 by the time you're age 70. So when's the best time to start saving? Now, now, no matter what your age. The first step is making this a priority, establishing a savings plan. That's the hardest step, just to start five bucks a day, something. But it becomes easier to add to the savings once you have a plan, once you're doing it on a regular basis. Adding to uh, an existing plan becomes easier over time. Here are some tips on how to save money. I did a survey a while ago with providers, and here's some of the things they said. Some providers asked parents to bring business supplies so they wouldn't have to spend as much money. So parents would bring them crayons or construction paper, scissors, and so on, so the provider wouldn't spend as much. One provider said she was throwing elaborate birthday parties for the kids, but it was costing her a lot of money. So one year she turned around and said, parents, now you need to bring all this stuff. Somebody needs to bring a cake, drinks, decorations. Here's the list. Everybody's got to pick one and bring that for the next birthday party. And she said parents were willing to do it because they knew that their child was going to get a nice birthday party. So they were willing to contribute to the other birthday parties. And now the provider's not spending anything on birthdays. 
Now the provider said, if I got a windfall, I wouldn't spend it. A windfall is money you get during the year that you didn't expect to get. So uh, you got rebates, you got coupons, somebody gave you cash for a birthday party, you just you got a tax refund. You didn't plan on it, so don't spend it. That's a good opportunity to save. Some providers charge parents an annual supply fee, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, something, so that again, providers don't have to spend as much. One provider said, at the beginning of the year, she'll look around at the kids and pick one kid and say, that's my retirement baby. And all the money I get for that child for the year will go into my retirement. Other providers say, I, I use the food program check or half the food program check and put it into retirement. Another provider said, many providers said actually, they worked on reducing and eventually eliminating credit card debt, car loan interest, because making payments, paying interest will make it more difficult to save for retirement. Well, how much do you need in retirement? Experts say you need about roughly 70 to 80 percent of your current income. So, if your profit this year is, let's just say, $50,000, you'll need about thirty-five dollars to $40,000 in retirement income to maintain your current standard of living. 70 to 80 percent is just a rough number. Why? Many expenses you'll have in retirement will be lower. In general, housing costs are lower, transportation lower, not buying as many clothes. So you're saving money, you don't need as much. Some expenses are gonna go up, medical expenses being the prime example. So it's rough, 80 to 70 to 80%. Now, women in general will need to save more money for retirement than men. Women will tend to live longer. They'll tend to earn less and therefore their Social Security benefits will be lower. And in general, women will have more medical expenses over their lifetime. How much will you need to save? I would suggest you use one of these calculators, online calculators, that will tell you how much you need to save. You'll put in your age, uh, how much you can expect to get from Social Security, uh, how much income you're making now, how much income do you want in retirement, and it'll ask a bunch of questions, and it'll tell you, well, if you want to retire at age whatever, 68, then you'll need to save X amount of dollars each month until then. All right, I like the first calculator because I think it's the simplest, easiest to use. Now, I gotta warn you that it's easy to get overwhelmed by the results of such calculators. Oh my gosh, I gotta save three thousand dollars a month like wow I cannot possibly do it so just use this as a guide to help you understand what makes a difference in other words you might say I'm gonna retire at 66 and the calculator says oh you need to save all this well you say well okay what if I retire at 67 how, how much difference will that make uh, and so on you can manipulate how long you're gonna work when you're gonna claim Social Security and you can play with the numbers a little bit if your savings goal is hard to meet, which it is for many people, what do people do? They work long. They live on less. That's why we see people of retirement age saying to us, welcome to Walmart, or do you want fries with that? Because they're probably on Social Security, but they still have to work because the Social Security and the money that they save for retirement wasn't enough. So that's what most people do. They work a little longer. They try to live on less. You try to, you want to live on 80% of what you're making now. Uh, it's hard. Okay, maybe 75, 70, 65%. Uh, that's what people do. You're going to live in retirement on the money that you have in retirement. Now, okay, you're saving something for retirement. Great. Now you need to take advantage of the biggest tax benefit in your life, which is investing in what's called an individual retirement account, an IRA. That's where you want to put most of your retirement savings. Why? Let's say you invested 5000 a year for 20 years and you earned 
I'm saying 8% a lot, but just as an example, I'm not promising you that that's what you can earn. Well, if you didn't invest this money through an IRA, you'd have about $129,000 after 20 years. If you did invest through an IRA, you'd have $164,000. Plus, IRAs have you give you annual tax benefits each year. So, you want most of your retirement money in an IRA, and that will give you the biggest bang over your lifetime. Well, where do I put my money in IRAs? Here are top three, in my opinion, uh, companies that can invest your money. Vanguard, Fidelity, Schwab. They have a lot of options there. I don't have time to go into all the details there, but you want to start. You don't have to start with a whole lot of money. And for more details and more specifics of where you should invest your money, I've written an article, Where Should I Invest Your Money for Retirement? And that will give you uh, a lot more information about this. You need to educate yourself. Most providers, we didn't get a lot of education from our parents or from school. It's like, well, we're kind of on our own. So it's important to take responsibility for this. When saving for retirement, when making decisions about investing for retirement, don't invest in anything that you don't understand. If you don't understand it, don't do it. And take a little time to help explain it for yourself before you take that step. I think a good beginning step about money is a book called Personal Finance for Dummies by Eric Tyson. It's on Amazon, it's on used bookstores, these yellow dummy books. Really, really good, easy to understand. I strongly recommend that's where you start. He's also written a number of books about uh, investing in IRAs and so on, and all his books are good. Your local community college or library may offer a financial planning class. You know, one evening, what to do about uh, retirement, what to do about Social Security and so on. I think it's worthwhile taking a look at those, attending a couple of those, because they're very likely to give you a lot of written materials that can be helpful. And of course, there's a lot on the internet. TIAA CREF, that's a, a good resource for uh, articles. FinancialEngines.com, MoneyCentral, MSN.com. That's what I want to say. It's expected you'll live about a fourth of your life in retirement. That's a long time. And what will your retirement look like? You can have the retirement you want the sooner you start saving. And don't let short-term spending disrupt your ability to save for retirement. Every little bit of savings makes a difference over the long run. A small amount of savings each year over a long period of time will get you where you want to go. So don't get discouraged if you feel like, oh, I'm, I'm too old or I haven't, don't have any money. No, no. Anything you do now can make a difference. You can do it. I've written a book, Family Child Care Money Management and Retirement Guide which goes into what I've been talking about here in great detail. I've also posted a number of articles on my website about money management, retirement planning, IRAs. All these are available for free on my website. If you have questions after listening to this, I'm happy to try to answer them. I don't charge anything for answering questions. Here's my email address. I've given you my link to my website where I posted lots and lots of articles about this topic. So good luck. I'm not providing you with uh, professional financial planning advice. You need to seek out a professional if you want. And lastly, this video was funded by the Child Care Communications Management Center, which is funded by the Office of Child Care, Administration for Children and Families, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, and was developed in partnership with the National Center on Early Childhood Quality Assurance, which is funded by OCC, the Office of Head Start, ACF, and HHS. This resource, this video, can be duplicated, can be shared for non-commercial uses. You can make copies of it, and I urge you to do it. Thanks very much for listening.